let's quickly move on to this topic i want to mention here hopefully this works oh my days hopefully this works. so yeah second thing i want to mention was regarding mr eric griffin and um his involvement in king of the stink now most of our podcast fans won't care about this so i'm going to try and tie this into a larger point about knowing your position um because it looks like uh eric griffin's being kicked off or replaced or told to sit this one out when it comes to um, king of the sting and i think it speaks to a larger point that i want to make about knowing how to play your position knowing where you stand in the kind of hierarchy of your peer group of your industry of whatever thing you're in is in my opinion somewhat of a superpower and the quicker especially as a dude the quicker you realize where you are in a pecking order the kind of easier your life will be because you'll stop lasting and wanting for things that are not really within your reach and you'll try to make the best of the things that you have available in your reach or you'll maybe honor the things that you have whatever it may be and i think at this moment from what i can see with eric griffin again this is from someone that doesn't know the guy i don't really consume much of his content um i've seen him here and there on other shows i thought he's quite funny on he does come across like a bit of a whiny baby at sometimes but you know he's a comedian i guess they're all kind of sensitive whiny babies to some extent but um he seems pretty funny he seems like a pretty chill dude and from the times that i've seen him on king of the sting he seems to be quite funny and a good addition to the show because he seems like he seems like one of the only ones on there that kind of sounds like a grown-up right when they're talking about serious issues now again you're not going to go on king of the sting for serious issues the whole the whole premise of king of the sting when it first started was you know it was kind of off the back of um when Theo first kind of got involved with Brendan Schaub and Brian Cannon, he would kind of, you know, rip them, right? Especially Brendan, he ripped them, right? Like, oh, they would go back and forth in terms of insulting each other. And it was really funny, really, really good stuff. Because especially for fans that didn't like Brendan, there was the one person that legitimately we kind of felt like was roasting him in a joking way, but also in a serious way. And people kind of got to live vicariously through some of the insults that Theo would levy towards Brendan. So that was cool. So it's kind of like a like a roasting session thing and then over time i guess it evolved into whatever it is now um you know brendan has jokes written for him and they have the segments in like a tv show but it's whatever not whatever it's just a youtube show and it? it's just a podcast youtube thing that same similar to what i do and a riff in between because they're comedians now for whatever reason um theo has been in and out of the show there's personal reasons you know it's going to be mentioning his depression and stuff but I, I i don't know for me personally i just think he's kind of in a bit of a moment where he probably doesn't want to do it anyway but you know as per most things because they started it together and maybe because he doesn't like confrontation he probably hasn't got the courage enough in him to kind of say hey i don't want to do this anymore or maybe just because the money's good i don't feel that depression thing is a thing i just think he just doesn't want to do it because he's probably maybe worn out he's got other things going on who knows but he hasn't been on a lot of the shows and they went to get new guests in and i guess they decided to reach out to eric and so far he's been doing okay on the show and for whatever reason in no and for whatever reason and then all of a sudden chris Alia comes back into the fold he pops out out he kind of leaves his house looking a bit weathered and haggard but still able to pull numbers right this guy is still like consistently getting you know within the kind of 80 sorry within the kind of 80 to 100 thousand views uh you know on his on his podcast legitimately so you know the babies are still there um supporting the guy even though he was accused of what he was accused of right being a diddler so but then when chris came back into the podcast and fold like him or not not what like what he did allegedly or was accused of doing or not the guy's blockbuster the guy's podcast blockbuster or blockbuster as um fucking Shaw would say like he brings the numbers he's funny as hell and he actually makes the show more enjoyable wherever he's on he kind of adds to it because of how silly and fun he is and whatnot blah 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 obviously it can be a little bit much because it can all be about him 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 but if you really want to kind of have a successful show especially on youtube and shit and you get delirium involved it's going to go to the moon so um all that to say it looks like a shiny new toy came along or shiny old new toy came along um they saw the numbers they saw the reception for the fans it worked better probably because they're they're probably more friends i'd guess right I, 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 it'd be fair to assume brendan theo and chris probably know each other better than um, eric does know each of them individually or together i'd imagine so so it just works as a show better that way and in general um in my opinion 
in my opinion. I just don't think Eric is at that level those guys are. And I think it's a mindfuck for him because he would clearly think in his head he's probably funnier than both of Theo and Brendan on the stage. Maybe he might um, might acquiesce and say, you know, Delia might be funnier than him on stage or maybe someone's hard to follow. But for sure in his head, he would definitely think, yeah, I could, I'm definitely a better comic than Brendan because anybody is. And he definitely thinks he could give Theo a good run for his money. So in his head, he thinks he's at that level, but he's not. And I think in general, in life, I've noticed, especially myself in my career, um, I've had a lot of issues with kind of understanding my position in relation with other people and where their careers are, where my career is, the things I've not done, the things I have done. And it can be difficult to kind of wrangle in your head to kind of make it work in your head, especially when you've got people like a Brendan Shaw, because he kind of, that would be the one that would kind of like, it, did, it wouldn't make sense in your head because in your head you'd be like, hold on, this guy's not funny. He can't speak. He's dumb as fuck. Why is he... I mean, it wouldn't make any sense, but life isn't fair. Life isn't, even sport isn't like that. There is no such thing as like a meritocracy. It doesn't really exist. Like you get given opportunities sometimes just through pure luck or through pure connection. It's not always based on your talent or your skill, or whatever. It can just be that or a combination of things. So it can mess up with your head a little bit because you, like, you could look at it analytically, critically and be like, hold on, I'm better at him in every department of this thing. Yet he's got double the bank account that I have or triple, whatever it may be. Um, and unfortunately, that is just how life is. And I think the sooner you um, accept that reality, the better life can be the more kind of at peace you'll be with the position you have because the truth of the matter is Eric Griffin is still super successful he still gets to do what he wants um what he loves when he wants you know uh, you know in for the comfort of his own home he's got a wife I think he's recently right I think he got engaged or something right he's probably gonna have a child soon um you know young you know, like whatever like you, you you're living a sick life like legitimately a sick life you live in LA like you can't be it and you've got your basically your career in your own hands great for once in your career you're not you're beholden by the industry or by agents or by whatever you can do things on your own and kind of smash it that way cool yes it's a bit annoying that you're gonna get thrown to the side when a newer shinier toy comes along that people like but that is unfortunately life it really is unfortunately life it's a sad harsh reality of life like sometimes you are the best option available at the time that you're there but then as soon as somebody else comes along who's better than you in every sense of the word they are going to replace you with that person it's going to happen like i know even for myself like i know there's been jobs i've got in the past where clearly i wasn't the best candidate but i was the best out of a bad bunch like that was it like i was lucky that does happen sometimes you get lucky you uh, i won't even say you get lucky you kind of make your own luck because your momentum you're going for it right because as much as i you know don't think brendan's funny like there's no there's no doubting he did really squeeze the the juice out of that lemon or orange whatever that he got from rogan right he really made the most of it like he really you know consistency in the podcasting the merch the live shows like he really made the most out of that shine that that light he was given of being on that podcast which is what allowed him to be the beast that he is now at the moment but yeah of course he's not as funny as eric griffin but this is just the nature of life unfortunately and it happens in every walk of life it really really does and the sooner you accept your position you understand where you are um your life just becomes far easier i think in my opinion um obviously you're, you're allowed to have delusions of grandeur and you're allowed you're allowed to want more you're allowed to maybe you know want to aspire to be at that level but there's also and you have to have some sort of level of acceptance of the level that you're at and this is the level that he's at he's at that level his level is this level doing his own show um maybe guesting a couple of times here and there but it's not being with those guys because clearly they said you're not part of the cool club you are over there like it's me it's the brendan theo and chris they're the cool guys they're the kind of box office podcaster guy type people and you're over there which is harsh but it's fair not harsh not fair it's just it's life it's not harsh it's not fair it's life it really is that's all it is and i think we can all learn a lesson from that in my opinion um i'll just close out with him talking about it because I, I don't know why i did this this way i rambled about it my own point um explained what he said without actually playing what he said but yeah this is what eric griffin said about the um him not being on king of the sting anymore play here Lower sound of it. oh the world went crazy y'all covid hit um the, our business went went 
went away basically in terms of like touring comedian stuff so some people decided to move you know joe rogan moved to austin theo decided to move to tennessee he moved to tennessee and he he still lives there so you know and it's widely known he talks about it they talk about it on their podcast on his own podcast you know he got his own personal issues that he was dealing with and he was dealing with these things the whole time so they still wanted to do their podcast so they asked steve to come on the podcast and then i day is brendan not day i did it a couple times and then they approached me like yo man we like this what you're bringing to the podcast can you just come <clears throat> it, it was no like set like hey come this amount of times or that amount of times it was like hey can you come and like be a host with us when theo's not there and then he'll be like zoom sometimes maybe he will be there and we just started doing it like that and it just happened like that so then I'm there. I'm, 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 you, as you know, I'm there hosting. Sometimes I'm sitting in one seat. Sometimes on the couch. You know, they trying to figure that out. It's Theo's show. He could do whatever he wants. He didn't want to sit in that seat. He wanted. He was like, I kind of like this energy. So you know, and he's was dealing with whatever he was dealing with. So he was in and out, in and out. And so we went for months doing it like that. So then they invited Chris to come on the show uh, with us. Uh oh. And then the whole dynamic changed because it was like, you know, you talking about Chris is a big, huge personality. So is Theo. So is Brendan. So am I, really. So they, they, so they're, uh, that dynamic changed, and the numbers were, like, huge. So they saw something. They were like, wow, this is really, uh, really popular amongst the, the fans. Negative or positive, it got a lot of views. It got a lot of attention. So they decided that they wanted to try a new format. King sting and the wing that's not king sting and eric it was never king and the sting and eric it was king and the sting and then they now they decided hey let's do king sting and the wing and also let's put it on patreon that's where it's a blow in it because <clears throat> if you listen to what he said they never wanted to change the name of the show when he joined when eric griffin joined it was still king and the sting and he was just another guest on like the panel but then when Chris Alia comes on, it does so well that they are now they're like, oh, we have to change the name of the show now. Well, not we, I guess Brendan, for the most part, it seems like was the one driving that boat because he's probably the one looking at the numbers and the views and stuff. Um, and now it's changed. So unfortunately, the fact of the matter is clearly those guys don't necessarily see Griffin at the same level that he thinks he sees himself, that he, he thinks he sees himself in comparison to them. The other thing that's a bit sad about this, again, for his case in point, is the fact that he seems to be the guy that always kind of gets ditched for the most part. For whatever reason, he's one of the only guys in that comedy, LA comedy scene, who's friends with all those guys, but also has never been on Rogan, which is weird, isn't it? Because you'd think he's, I, I, is he past the comedy? I don't know if he is, but he's definitely a, a mainstay in that group. Everyone knows him in that group, but then he's never been on Rogan. I never really understood that. Maybe Rogan doesn't like him. I'm not too sure. That's a weird one for me in that regard. And then the other thing is, if I'm not mistaken, um, good um, Bad Friends Law, um, the podcast with Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino, was that a supposed, I'm not sure if that's true or that's just like a thing, that Eric approached Bobby to do a podcast first and he didn't want to do it. And then I think quite soon after that, um, Andrew Santino and Bobby launched Good Friends, or Bad Friends, sorry, right? Uh, Good Friends was the one that Andrew Santino was going to sue them for, right? But yeah, no, Bad Friends. So clearly, every time every time there's a better option out there, people always go for the better option as opposed to hitching their wagon to Eric Griffin. It could be because they don't think he's got enough clout. It could be because they don't think he's funny. Or it could just be because of his personality. I don't know. Who knows what the thing is, but... It's just, you know, it's a bit of a, that, that's the only sad thing about it in that regard. Like he's being ditched again. And now he's, you know, massive amounts of copium in terms of trying to explain it, like to make it seem, make it, to make it seem less than a rejection than what it is. But unfortunately, I think for myself, accepting a rejection as personal is actually a better way to move on as just kind of, trying to disassociate yourself from it and trying to explain it away it's actually better to be like no this is a rejection this is the person saying they don't want me then you're able to just say okay they don't want me that's fine hopefully somebody else wants me 
instead of being like, oh no, it's like you're going to, I always say job interviews because that's the only thing that I know, right? But it's like going to a job interview and not getting a job and then saying, oh yeah, um, I didn't get a good vibe from him anyway. Yeah, they were looking for something. It's like, no, 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 no. You, you, you did the perfect interview. You arrived on time. You answered every question as best as you could. You know, da, 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 you, you held their attention. You, you know, well, you did a good job. But they decided after careful consideration that they didn't want you. So basically your best at that time wasn't enough. That's okay. Next day. That's actually okay. That's actually okay. But for whatever reason, humans, I don't know why we do this to ourselves. We kind of try to, um, you know, explain and no, but really here's what happened. And yeah, you know, the wing, the king, I was never on for this. I was doing this. Like, no, you thought you were part of the gang. You thought you were part of the show. You were probably waiting to be made official. You were probably wondering why they didn't change the name. Like you were wondering these things. And, then, you know, I guess over time, maybe he got a bit disillusioned with the show himself anyway, and then decided to change. Cause it was only recently that we, I saw that clip of him kind of jokingly, not joking mentioning to Brandon why they didn't get any bonuses what do you think do you think do you honestly think um they're not going to get any bonuses the king winging this thing if they do with the numbers they're meant to be doing beyond patreon do you think they're not going to get any flipping bonuses if they do that way come on come on man but anyway let's move on from that one because you know whatever in it uh grown men decides to do grown men things it is what it is not my business let's move on 